Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. I've got half an old hay bale here that I need to move. It's been harbouring snakes, so it's just got to go. And I've got a swale cut out that still needs some love. Problem is the solution. I just need to get both areas together and both problems will be fixed. In today's video, I'll show you what I've already done, what's still to do, and I thought I'd also give you an update on what's growing in this bottom swale in spring. I started moving some of the hay already and I've covered the walls of this little spillway that comes out from my dam. They were still quite bare, patchy in some spots, so I've kind of patched it up. It's all about getting the soil covered and protected, especially with summer coming, so that the life will continue there, moisture will remain and hopefully a bit more grass and other plants will grow on these cut out areas. We've had a bit of rain of late, not as much as some areas of Victoria, but um, about 40 mil all up. So this swale is quite damp still. And after winter, it does need a bit more coverage. It is quite sort of waterlogged at the moment, but it will dry out. So to prevent that just being sort of baking in summer, I'll get a layer of the hay onto this bottom area as well and that will help protect it and get a bit more growth happening on this spillway. The initial part is, isn't too bad but down further it gets a lot more runoff from up in the pasture area and the water seems to sit here longer. So we just need to improve the soil so that that will drain away a lot quicker. Heading away from the dam uh, along the swale, you can see that there's areas here that got quite a bit more growth. So that's what I'm hoping for, for the start of the spillway and also up a bit further that I'll show you now. You can see that there is quite a bit of bare ground. So this will benefit from a bit of hay on top of it. I have had the animals in here recently, so we've got some manure to help build the soil. But a lot more hay on this end of the swale will really help get the grasses growing and get that soil life happening a bit more. Growth is slowly coming. You can see a lot of the deep taprooted weeds are here, which are there to repair the soil. So that's all good. Grass will come once they've done their job. Just a bit further, you can see it is really bare. So that's where I'm gonna concentrate the hay. Each spring, with all the uh, grass growth in these swales, I've been making the most of that and giving that a good trim, then moving it into the swale and up on the cutout as well. Just down there, you can see an area of the cutout that's repaired quite well. And I think that might just get a little bit more moisture running down from the pasture. This area here, I'm sure dries out more. So now I've just got to put in the time to move all that hay from the driveway up onto this area and I'll have both of those problems sorted. Now let's have a look at the berm itself and how everything's growing. Just here, I've got a walnut tree. It's only just starting to come to life. We're towards the end of October. Uh, it does have a lot of grass here that I will clear and make the most of that on my cutout. I do have some tagasasti trees and some currants hidden in amongst this grass, so I'll have to be careful when I chop here. But that's just to support this tree and hopefully once these tagasasti grow up, it'll mulch the uh, walnut really well and um, just help it to thrive. Actually, I'm having a hard time finding any of the currants that I put in here. It was probably a little bit premature and it doesn't really matter. I'll be able to put some more in down the track when the area is a little bit more under control. Just down from my first walnut tree, I've just recently put in a black mulberry tree. I'm hoping that will grow well. It's probably about six meters away from the uh, walnut. So 
So we'll see over time if that affects the growth. But I've got this started and it's starting to get some nice growth on it. It's a very small tree at the moment. So it's about getting it established and hopefully that'll take off nicely. I tend to add in plants into my swales that are easy to propagate. Here I've got some elderberry, which is the simplest thing to propagate. I just put it into um, a glass of water, get some roots starting and then get it planted. That should take off um, fairly quickly and just provide you know, another plant in the area. And we can also chop it and use it as mulch or just harvest the, the flowers and the berries as they are. Uh, Come along. Once again, I've got some Rubinia pseudoacacia freesias in my swales. They're a beneficial tree, but I really just love the foliage. Just here, I've got my second walnut tree. And once again, it hasn't uh, got any new leaves coming on it just yet, but it shouldn't be too long. I've also planted some tagasasti trees around it and some current plants that I could find. They're a little bit larger than the others and I have been nurturing them a little bit more. I will be coming around shortly and really clearing these grasses down and using it as mulch around all these plants. I've also recently been out here and chopped my tagasasti trees and that, all the branches and leaves are on the ground. But when I come out and clear the, the grasses, I'll be also adding a little bit of that as mulch around my plants. Just here I've got another elderberry that I put in the ground uh, a lot later than the little one that we just saw. I put that in at the same time as I planted my macadamia trees. Now I did make a video about that so I'll link that here and let's have a look and see if these weird looking structures actually protected them from the frost. Okay under we go. I don't want to take them off just yet because there could still be frosts, but this tree is looking very happy. It's got lots of new growth on it, and I think it's made it through its first winter really well. Now over this side of the swale, I've got my second macadamia tree. This one was a little bit damaged by frosts, but it's got some growth on it too, so I think it's come through okay. So right next to the macadamia tree, I've got a couple of elderberries. Now the idea of those planted right next to it is just to give it a bit of support. Once the tree gets up a bit, I will remove this structure, but by that time, these will be quite a bit larger and hopefully uh, give it some protection from the wind and cold and also that frost. This section here is in between two apple trees, which we'll have a look at shortly. But I did have a video on it with planting lots of trees. Now some of them have uh, survived, but my cows have escaped their fences and they seem to love to go and eat small plants. So I've lost a banksia and a few other little plants that um, I had started in this area. So it's not as lush with growth as I would have liked. This here is the first of my apple trees. It's just getting its leaves on and there are some flowers for the first time coming on it. I have got four apple trees on this berm, which I selected for different purposes and so that they actually produce their fruits at different times of the year. So I've got some uh, plants that are further along than this one, but it has started and it's a Granny Smith apple, a good cooking apple. So I'll be looking forward to uh, sampling some of these apples this year. This is my second apple tree and it's a Cox's Orange Pippin and it's looking absolutely beautiful for the first time. It's got quite an abundance of beautiful flowers on it. This is the first year it's flowered. It's been in the ground for about three years. This will be its third season. So I'm hopeful for some really delicious apples from this tree. Something I did want to mention, I'm sure somebody would comment if I didn't, is the amount of growth at the base of each tree. Now, while it does look like it's um, being smothered by weeds, if you look down 
more closely, you'll see that there's a lot of woody mulch that I've been placing around each of these trees. I've also over winter got a layer of um, rotted manure, put that around it and put more of my tagasasti trees down around each of these trees. This creeping buttercup sort of climbs up through it, but it's really not that thick and I don't think it's impacting the trees at all. I actually really love the little yellow flowers that the creeping buttercup has, even though I don't really appreciate the plant being around here um, in such abundance. Right down there, we've got a lot of soil building. When I put this um, mulch on the top, I tend to just sort of squash down all the grasses and eventually the soil will change into more fungal dominated and those grasses and the buttercup will just naturally disappear. Moving away from my Cox's Orange Pippin, I've got a, another apple tree, a Frequent Rouge, which is more a uh, cider apple. So I've got that one up in here. Now this one does fruit later in the season, so it's only just starting to get some leaves and it's also getting a few flowers. So I think my apple trees are starting to become quite happy and they're looking healthy enough. The pruning leaves a little to be desired. I am still learning that skill, but as long as they produce some fruit, well, I'm happy enough with that. Just next to my Frequent Rouge apple, I've got a magic bean tree, which somebody gave me. It is not doing so well, but hopefully it might kick in over summer. It looks like it might have been affected with cold and the moisture. So we'll see how that one goes. But doing great next to this apple tree are some red currant plants. I've got four of them, which are all doing really well. I have been around recently and helped clear some of the grasses around these plants and get some of that tagasasti down. So that's really helping these ones along. Just past that little apple tree, I have an Indigo Ferra Australis, which has struggled with the frost, especially last year, it was almost wiped out. But this Tagasasti tree here has helped give it a bit of frost protection and the fact that our winter was a bit milder this year has helped as well. But this is just a beautiful little plant. It can be used uh, for dyeing as a natural dye. So I'm looking forward to using that down the track when it's big enough to harvest from. And just up from the Indigo Ferra, we've got the fourth and final apple tree here, which is a Bonza variety, which is a good eating apple. This is the first season that it's flowered, a bit like the other apple trees. I'm pretty excited that this tree has got flowers on it because it's the tree out of the four apple trees that's really struggled the most. It's still the smallest, but this area of the swale was really quite um, dense clay. So we've tried to improve the soils a bit in this area and it's starting to pay off. I've, like everywhere else, just got lots of the grassy mulch and the woody mulch and uh, slowly, I think some of the protection around from the trees surrounding it has really helped this apple tree also. But um, it looks like we're heading in the right direction. Like other areas, I've planted some current plants just to get plants in the ground really. And I've also added in a couple of uh, rhubarb plants. They've struggled a little bit too with the um, challenging soil in this area but I get this feeling that they're just starting to kick in. We've come to the end of the swale and this is where I did a video on transplanting volunteers. Unfortunately, I think that could be called a fail. I did have escaping cows, mostly because I forget to turn the electric fence on often and they sense that and get out and the first thing they go for is small plants. So I've really got to keep my cows in and the trees might take off a little bit better. But I've got one still hanging in there. I don't know how it will go, but I don't think I'll be bothering transplanting volunteers again unless they're really tiny and you don't have to um, upset the root system. 
that's a tour of my bottom swale. As you can see, there's lots of work to be done, but in good problem is the solution style. By moving my snake harboring hay bale, it helps fix my swale cutout and also removes the chance of snakes hiding in that spot. And the long grass in my swale, I can cut, use to mulch my plants, or also add to my cutout and further repair it. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.